Oh, welcome to Grizzly Tales for Gruesome Kids. A series of cautionary tales for lovers of squeam. Spindle Shanks is short of cash this month, so I'm helping him raise a bit extra off the Tooth Fairy. Ready? <laughs> I call this tale Spoil Sport. It's about people who spoil other people's fun. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> This house belongs to the meanest family in Britain. Ma and Pa Pinchgut were too mean to give their children names, so they called them Girl and Baby. Baby was only six and still had a lot to learn about being mean, but Girl was ten and was already as mean as her parents. At Christmas, Girl loved ruining the magic for Baby. Who's gonna get loads and loads of presents from Father Christmas then? Me, 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 I am! Of course, that's not Father Christmas, you know. That's Mr Grumble from the Ironmongers. No, not true. If you don't believe me, tread on his toe. He dropped a hammer on it last week. Yo! Oh. Chug his beard, it's false. Ow! Ah! And punch the elf, it's not real. But the elf was real and punched Baby back, which meant that Baby cried all through Christmas. Then one night, Baby lost a tooth. Oh, super! This means I'll get money from the Tooth Fairy. Heh, <laughs> snorted girl. Fairies don't exist, Mr Gullible. It's Mum and Dad. <laughs> <laughs> but the following morning, when Baby came downstairs with 50 pence, girl was livid. Tell him, she screamed. Tell him it was you who put that money under his pillow. But we didn't, said Ma. We'd never give Baby money when we could spend it on ourselves. Huh? They're just saying that to stop you from crying. Don't listen to anything they say, Baby. Your childhood stops here. The Tooth Fairy's dead. <laughs> At that precise moment, in an insubstantial reality beyond the bounds of reason, the Tooth Fairy was pouring cauldrons of boiling toothpaste over the battlements of her tooth castle to stop bacteria from swarming up the walls and capturing her crown. Her castle was built out of children's teeth, but years of attack from the barbarian bacteria had left the teeth weak. They were rotting. Bombs away! <laughs> she needed solid teeth to rebuild her walls, but solid teeth were the ones in the gums. I have an idea, said the gum goblin, who was head of intelligence at the Tooth Fairy's HQ. Wherever in the world a tooth fell out, he heard it first. Do you remember that small boy you visited last night? You mean baby? <laughs> Yes, his sister thinks you don't exist. That really gets my goat, puffed the tongue toad, the Tooth Fairy's chief advisor. I can't stand it when children don't believe. We should teach her a lesson. Oh, yes, please. And at the same time, solve the problem of our rotting castle walls. Are you suggesting what I think you're suggesting? I might be, 
Does the word pliers mean anything to anyone? <laughs> Baby had cried all day since he'd been told that the Tooth Fairy didn't exist, which was why he'd been put outside with the cat. Upstairs, Girl was woken by a throbbing in her jaw. Oi! What's going on? That's my tooth! I know! Giggled the ditzy dentist. I'm taking the lot, if you don't mind, to refurbish the castle. You're the tooth fairy, gasped girl. And you're a naughty girl for not believing in me. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'd better get started on those big molars. Yeah! <laughs> the next morning, girl was toothless. I'll get even with that wicked tooth fairy if it's the last thing I do. Ha 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 So the tooth fairy does exist? Yelped Baby, jumping up like a dog. Which gave Girl an idea. Tooth at the pinch cuts cried the gum goblin under girl's pillow. But we removed all her teeth last night. I'm not wrong. It's a trap. How could a tooth be a trap? A mouth is a trap, a tooth is a tooth. And the tongue toad was right. It was a trap. <laughs> gotcha. Let me go. You're wrinkling my wings. Not until I get my teeth back. I'll squash you, I will, and ruin toothless nights for kids everywhere. But you don't understand. I've used your good teeth to rebuild my castle walls. If I give them back, my castle will be destroyed by bacteria. Oh, dear. Then it looks like you can't win all the way, doesn't it? So the Tooth Fairy flew Girl back to her castle. No, 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 this is a bad idea. You'll do as I say or the Tooth Fairy gets it. All right, cried the Tongue Toad, arriving back with a sack full of Girl's good teeth. You can put her down now, but I warn you, you'll be sorry. Because just then, a fearful slurping shook the castle to its roots. The bacteria swarmed through the enamel walls and surrounded the Tooth Fairy in the Crown Chamber. What do you want? she asked. Good teeth, grunted their brutish leader, Bacillus Maximus. Give us one meal of good teeth and we'll go away. But the gum goblin didn't have any, the tongue toad didn't have any, and the tooth fairy had lost hers years before in a barroom brawl. Which just left girl. In less time than it takes to floss a fang, the bacteria had gone, and girl was just a puddle of smelly brown sludge. Which meant that the pinch guts were able to bury her in a cheap fizzy pot bottle instead of an expensive brass handled coffin. Which, as Ma and Pa told Baby, was something of a result. We think we've cracked it this time. I've nailed Spindleshank's feet to the floor. Ready? <laughs> What did you want the extra money for, anyway? <laughs> for football club. Oh, well, don't really need it now, do you? 